Hi, my name is Carly Hendricks de Palomino, and I live in Reynosa, Mexico. And this is my financial testimony. I always grew up learning and listening about tithing and offering. Um, I always witnessed my parents putting in their tithe and offering in the plate when it would pass by. Um, as I grew older, um, every now and then I would put in a $20 bill, but never really understood the true meaning of what it meant to tithe. In March of, two, of 2023, I attended campus days at Karis Bible College in Woodland Park, Colorado. <clears throat> On the first day of classes, um, they did the praise and worship and the offering talk, which really wasn't any different than any other offering talk, you know, that I had ever heard before. But I felt this crazy conviction in my heart um, to give that day. Um, but it was to give all of the cash that I had in my wallet. So I ignored it. I had that conviction on my heart the entire service. I couldn't focus, I couldn't pay attention. So when the service was over, I went to um, a member of the serve team and I said, this is what's going on. I have a conviction to give um, all of the cash that I have in my wallet. I handed it over to the serve team and I walked away. I was headed to lunch. As soon as I took that first step, headed to lunch, um, I, in, in my heart, I heard, that's not all that you have. And so I said to myself, I'm like, what do you mean that is, that it, that's not all that I have? So I stopped in the middle of the hallway, opened up my wallet, and sure enough, I had a couple thousand pesos um, just sitting in there. So I'm like, is this what you mean, God? I need to give this to? And he said, yeah. And that was when I truly felt that that day, the first time I felt calm about my giving. So I headed to lunch. I was in the checkout line. There was about two people in front of me when their system went down. And they said, it's, it's going to be cash only. And so it got up to me. And I noticed that there was a lady standing over to my left a little bit, just staring at me. I wasn't really sure why. I knew that I didn't have any cash to pay for my lunch. But I got up there and I started rustling around in my bag, looking for change that I knew that I didn't have because I'd given all of it up, even all of my coins. And that lady approached me and she said, God has been dealing with me about you all day and she said I was told to give you this and um, lunch will be on me for the rest of the week and she gave me money and I was baffled nothing has ever happened to me like that before after that trip I continued to tithe my first 10 percent every week faithfully but then in August I stopped working I had finished my um, travel assignment and stopped working I was um, about to move to Mexico to get married and I had spent the whole last year saving as much as I could um, because my plan was to take one full year off of work just to focus on getting acclimated to a new culture, being a stepmom, being a wife, all of that. So I get to Mexico and I had stopped tithing because that I did not put that as a part of my budget. By the middle of September, the conviction was so heavy, so I started praying about it, and I asked God, I said, how much do you want me to give? I had already had a predetermined number in my head of how much I thought would be okay to give, and he told me a number that was double. He took me back to the beginning of the Bible when he created man. Um, Adam didn't have to ask for food or water or air to breathe. He didn't have to ask for anything. God had already supplied all of his needs before he even needed them. And so that's what he told me. He said, I will supply for all of your needs. So fast forward a little bit. I got married in October and we went on our honeymoon. I still had no plans of getting a job until after that one year was up. Um, but while I was on my, on my honeymoon, something was just not right and I felt like I needed to start applying for jobs. By the end of the honeymoon, I had a job interview lined up. So that next Friday, I went to the job interview. Everything went really good. Um, that next Monday, they um, called and offered me the job at a very 
good rate. Uh, it was higher than what I, what I was expecting, but I still felt like there was a little bit of wiggle room. And she said she would check on it, and the next day she called me with an offer that was $12 more an hour than the original offer that she had that she had originally offered me. And then she said, they also want to offer you a $20,000 sign-on bonus. And so I said, okay, yeah, I'll take that. So send the offer over. So she sent it over and right before, and I'm talking seconds, seconds before I clicked accept, I got a phone call from her and she said, wait, have you signed that offer yet? And I said, no, not yet. And she said, well, they want to offer you another $5,000. And I said, okay. Three days before my wedding, I found out that I would not be able to get legally married in Mexico because the United States was holding on to some of the permissions and the documents that I would need to get married internationally. The cost of all these permissions and documents would be over half of what I had in my bank account saved over the last year. Um, I was really, really upset. I was like, there's no way that I can do this because I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not gonna have the means to be able to make it. And the Lord had told me, he said, Remember, I am the supplier of all of your needs. I need you to take this step of faith. So I did, and I paid for all of my documents in full. That left me with, with less than half of what I had arrived to Mexico with. And I was just believing um, for a financial miracle, really. So when I started my job on December 11th, I had $30 in cash uh, to my name. And uh, I wasn't going to be getting my first paycheck and it was only supposed to be an orientation paycheck for three days for a total of 24 hours. It was only supposed to be 24 hours and it was going to arrive on December 22nd. Um, well, on December 21st, all of my bills were due, all of them. On December 21st, I thought that they had just paid us one day early, but I found out last week that nobody got paid that day, but it posted to my account my first paycheck it was a full paycheck plus all of the bonuses that they told me that they were going to be giving me all in one paycheck so if, if you do the math um, overnight my my bank account grew 1,000 times uh, from $30 to $30,000 Luke 638 was one of the verses that I recited to myself, meditated on every single day. And it's the verse that everybody uses for tithing and offering, but I feel like everybody needs to hear it every day because until you get it, you just don't get it. And the verse is give and it will be given to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over but you have to take that step of faith. So I encourage you, if you were like me in struggling um, with your journey in tithing and offering, um, give what you can today and meditate on these verses and other verses. Make my revelation your revelation. And now every time uh, we put our envelope in, I stand up and I smile and I do a little dance. I really just, I just stand up and I just do this. <laughs> and I smile and I give thanks to God because um, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 or 8 says that uh, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So.